fresh off the heels of an unforgettable WrestleMania, WWE puts its next PLE uh, foot forward with Backlash, hailing from Lyon's de la something, France. The international run of PLEs means either really cool times for the US, like I'm a central, so it's noon, or it's like her from Elimination Chamber earlier, where I had to wake up at three something to get ready. So this PLE is similar to how Elimination Chamber was as of the recording of this video, which is <laughs> 1 a.m. Friday morning. There's only five scheduled matches for this. And while that might seem low, we saw before like not a lot of matches means each match there gets enough time to tell a good story gets enough time to play out it's not rushed for a sake of just being rushed and they usually turn out really really well and i don't expect anything different here without further ado this is the backlash france preview first we're going to cover the wwe women's tag team championship which is the kabuki warriors asuka and carrie sane of damage control versus Bianca Belair and Jay Cardgill. This match came about, which has been building for a while, uh, like two years, honestly, because Bianca Belair's pretty much been beefing with damage control since the beginning, and especially this new iteration of damage control with Bailey out, Kairi saying Asuka in. And so before it was like one on four, one on three, all that stuff. But recently, Bianca Belair's gotten some help in the form of Naomi uh, at WrestleMania, along with a debuting ish Jade Cargill, who, if you don't know who, who that is, is a superstar from AEW, another top United States wrestling company, came over, has been presented like a star. And now those two girls have been beefing with Damage Control, and now the tag titles on the line. This one, it probably is going to be the hardest to pick because both results make sense. Um, Damage Control keeping the titles. They're going to Raw from the BS that was that draft. They're going to Raw. They want to uh, keep that group strong, composed as new heels for the Raw division. So a win here makes sense. However, you have on the other side, Jade Cargill, who has been unstoppable since debuting. And WWE could, WWE could look to build that even further. And nothing says, build further than a tag title win against Asuka and Kairi Sane. So honestly, I'm just going to kind of toss up. I'm leaning towards a new champs only because it's Jay Cargill is so over that a loss and heel turn on Bianca doesn't make sense this early. I think they win in tiles. I think they hold them for a minute. And then when they drop them, have Bianca and Jade fight after that. But for now, we see new women's tag champs in Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill. Next, we have Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus Sol Sokoa and Tama Tonga, the new bloodline. So if you don't know, basically every member of the bloodline besides The Rock, who had a match at WrestleMania, lost at WrestleMania. And after Roman's loss of the, uh, the title, he's been MIA. So Solo Sokoa has been taken over as the de facto leader of the bloodline, I guess, brought in Tama Tonga, who has a decade plus huge career over in Japan as a top wrestler and solo kicked out Jimmy Uso from the bloodline right after WrestleMania and has been just whooping Kevin Owens ass for the last three weeks, including a blood affair a couple weeks ago. Naturally, Kevin wants revenge and he recruits his buddy from before mania randy orton and those two are going to take on a tag match i see the new bloodline i guess that's what we're calling them now new bloodline doesn't matter what you call them they're going to get the win they need the credibility solo has had a piss poor win loss record since beating john cena last november and it's to establish him and tamatanga as threats to be taken seriously not just you know daddy Roman Reigns is gone so the kids will play and stuff to establish them as credible, they need to win, and they need to win in dominant fashion. So I pick them to win, and then I pick them to lay out Kevin Owens and Randy Orton post-match in a brutal way to really send the message home that they are main event players here, main event players for 
SmackDown. So yeah, new bloodline takes a win. Next we have the WWE Women's Championship in a triple threat match with champion Bayley, who won it at WrestleMania against Io Sky versus Tiffany Stratton and Naomi. As much as I would love Tiffany Stratton to win here, I don't think Naomi has a shot, so I'm not picking her. As much as I want Tiffany Stratton to win here, it's too early. And there's so much story there to tell between Bailey and Tiffany one-on-one -on -one without Naomi. I think Bailey wins here. I think uh, Bailey pins Naomi. And then heading into what's the next event? Queen of King and Queen Irene or Clash of the Castle, whichever one's next. They tell the Tiffany Strad Bailey one-on-one -on -one story. But for now, look for a great match with Bailey coming out on top. Next, you have the World Heavyweight Championship between Damian Priest and Jey Uso. Damian won it after cashing in his money at bank contract at WrestleMania against Drew, who just won it from Seth Rollins in a five, literally like a five to ten minute reign. And then you have Jey Uso, who won a fatal four way to become the number one contender. And while that's cool, this whole build has not really been about Damian and Jay. It's been more so about Damian having to deal with the knuckleheads, the three stooges, that is the rest of his Judgment Day cohorts, JD McDonough, um, Dirty Dom Mysterio, and Finn Bala. And that's the story they've been going with as far as Damian, but like, you know what? Y'all starting to piss me off. I can do this on my own. And that could be enough for Jay to take advantage of that and get the win but it's way too early in Damian's reign to drop the title. I think if he drops the title now, it discredits what he's done to work to get to this point. And he, he just looks like a stooge, like an idiot. At, we're losing after a, a month. And Jay's at the point where he's, not say he's a legend like Orton or Cena, but he's getting to that point to where he can just lose these matches and yet still remain over, remain, you know, yeeting with the fans and all that stuff and still be as, you know, popular as ever. So with that, I think the Judgment Day tries to get involved. They nearly cost Damien a title, but Damien pulls it out by himself in the end. So give me Damien Priest to retain the World Heavyweight title. And last but not least, we have the undisputed WWE Championship between the champ Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. So you have Cody Rhodes who finished his story, won the title in spectacular fashion, WrestleMania 40. Like seriously, if you want the most ridiculous overbooked greatness you ever seen, go back and watch that title match from WrestleMania night two on Peacock, it's great. You, then you have the challenger, AJ Styles, who won a triple threat to get a number one contender championship match against LA Knight yeah beat him so now it's Cody Rose and AJ Styles for a title at Backlash which is AJ mentioned this recently on Smackdown I thought that was crazy those two have never had a one-on-one -on -one match and you think about all the parallels they had I guess it makes sense because Cody was leaving as AJ was coming in but they both went to Japan they both did the ring of honor they both did the NWA the TNA, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's the first time ever those two uh, having a match, which, which is awesome. I think this match gets the most time. I think this match is going to blow the roof off. I, I don't know the stadium. I don't know if there is a roof, but if there is a roof, it's going to blow it off and it's going to be electric. That being said, nothing against AJ Styles. There is no way in hell Cody loses this. Absolutely no way in hell. His reign is too early, and while there's a shot, I don't think we see a long reign from Cody. I don't see a month. That would be just a slap to the face of people who believed in him for two years, this dude included. So Cody's gonna win a hellacious match, a A-plus match, a potential match of the year. But yeah, Cody Rhodes is going to retain his title against AJ Styles. As far as what I think the overall card's gonna be, it's going to be great. Like I said before, the Elimination Chamber uh, card was like five matches, one talking segment, six things total. It filled the three hours and every match rocked. I think it's going to be similar here. We got five matches. They may throw a talking segment in there somewhere last minute, but it's going to rock. My match of the night, I'm, I'm going to guess, 
is going to be, let's go Jey Uso, Damian Priest. I think those two have uh, some very, very underrated chemistry in the ring. And it's going to get on display for that match. And they're going to get a bunch of time to tell a story. They're going to have a bunch of near falls. Crowd's going to be like suckered in. So I think that's going to be a match at night. And I'm predicting MVP to be Tiffany Stratton. Tiffy time. They're going to let her shine. They're going to let her show that she's ready for a stage. Even if she doesn't win, it's going to show that she's ready for a stage. Even if her new music is horrible. Hashtag fire. Death Rebel. But that is my backlash predictions. Let me know in the uh, comments below who do you think will win and who you think will be the star of the night. You go ahead, like, and subscribe. It helps out a lot. I am at It's Heartfelt on all socials. But for right now, I am just uh, Heartfelt. All right. I'm Heartfelt. Peace.